um, the main new theorem that I want to prove um, is the following, which are mixed up in important matrices, except the following, which is from a year ago. Um, so let A be a symmetric stochastic matrix. And lambda two is second largest eigenvalue. Then the following holds. Um, then so um, for every norm space. X and every uh, n vectors x1 of the xn in the middle space. Um, you can control the dimension of x from below by the following quantity. <coughs> There's um, um, some universal constant. It will be all the pairwise distances squared in this abstract norm divided by the same thing but with the matrix weights. Register mm -hmm. power one half, I think. All of them. Okay, so this is an inequality about stochastic matrices. So, this is a universal concept. Give me any stochastic matrix, uh, and what, what is a stochastic matrix? <coughs> symmetric stochastic, and 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 and, and by n. What is what? So the entries are uh, stochastic. Sum, it's symmetric. So the sum of the rows, it's symmetric, and the sum of the rows is one. Okay. The probability. No, no negative. No negative. And no negative. But so yeah. So I mean, uh, there is going to be very little probability in the top, but I thought it's stochastic. <laughs> I didn't plan to do it. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm not, that's the one thing I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Is anybody clear? So, um, so let's see a very quick uh, consequence of it, which was um, the reason I was interested in this. And what we'll do later is we'll see um, um, uh, two proofs of this consequence and all kinds of implications uh, um, that relate to old questions in metric geometry. I have, I have a question about the statement. So, Who's asking? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, if x is finite dimensional, you can't take uh, infinitely many, I mean, more and more ends and bigger and bigger ends. For any such thing, this exponential is always bounded by the dimension of x. That's what the theorem says. You will never succeed to make it bigger than the dimension. Okay? Regardless of what the norm is, regardless of what the vectors are, regardless of what n is, this will always be bounded by the dimension. Yes, I'm not interested. Um, okay, I, uh, I didn't, I, it could even be one. I, I, it's, uh, there, the proof has three parameters that you need to, and then some complicated function to optimize some Lagrange multiplier, pro multiplier problem. I did it on the back, on a back of an envelope, but it's not the kind of thing you do in public. I mean, one, 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 you know, um, I mean, uh, I think one third, one third or one quarter, I'm, really, I'm sure, but it could even be one or maybe one over e. Some, I, I, I don't remember, but it's not a bad concept. See, so. remember hmm? what do you mean? There's some numerical value which you compute. Yeah. See. Yeah, which is I don't remember what it what what I got, but what it was. You, what do you mean? It could be one. No, 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 it's some transcendental. No, it could be, it could be, no, no, no it, I, I, it could even be bigger than one. Are you computed a bound on this? A bound, yeah, yeah. It's, it's some sort of optimization problem with three parameters, with constraints, and uh, I don't remember. It could be bigger than one. I, I simply don't remember. Okay, but it's some number. Yeah, yeah. One quarter, I'm willing to bet is fine, uh, but I mean, yeah. 
Hmm? No, no, okay, a quarter, okay. Can that just be extra safe, ten, okay? That's all. Okay. But I simply don't know. And I, it's, it's some number which doesn't have an interesting meaning, um, except for the, what the proof is. Okay. Can you prove on that term? Let's leave it for the microphone. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so uh, quick consequences. Um, so, so, um, so, so, uh, let G at first is the numbers one to n and edges uh, B, uh, B row of one extender. <coughs> So with that I mean it's big over one regular, let's say four regular, <coughs> and uh, one minus number two is less than some, let's say zero point twenty nine or something. Only the way to one. Okay. And let DG <coughs> be the shortest path metric. Lambda 2 is smaller than um, the shortest path metric induced by G. And um, so suppose that X is any node space. And you have some mapping F from the, the vertices into or no, <coughs> um, which, well, uh, you should have right if i minus f j is less than uh, the g decimal distance between i and j, and at least one of these are parameters. So, this, this, whenever I, that happens, I, we, we say that the, metric, the shortest path metric can embed with distortion D into the known space. Um, so let's examine and, and, let's, and apply the theorem with um, um, A is the normalized adjacency matrix. So let's just examine. So this is a constant, 1 minus lambda 2. 1 over 10 is still a constant. Um, what's written in the numerator? So the typical distance between a pair of points in a bounded degree graph is log n. This is the sum, not the average. So what's written in the numerator here is, um, so that's right, is at least, let's forget about the 1 half, e to some constant, and now what? Um, in the numerator, we, so we constant over root n. The numerator was their n squared terms. Each one is log n squared. Okay. The denominator. So a i j is just one over the degree. So and so, um, but then the distances are one. But we lost the factor capital D here. So we have 1 over d squared <laughs> times 1, all these to the 1 half, which is a, you know, and there is a sum there. It's over edges, so yeah. times n. OK? So this is e to some constant over so c, e to the c log n over d, which is n to the c over d. OK? So what am, are we saying? We're saying if you embed an expander into absolutely any low-dimensional norm space, this is finitely many points, but it forces the ambient dimension to be large. 
No, it's not. Ex uh, D is. It, so it, I cannot do a computation on the board. The lower bound, I see, it's here. Sorry about that. Can you remove that there is this? Remove what? Before the F, right? Anyway. It feels like you're stating that there is this separate. I'm sorry that the board isn't perfect. Yeah. But that Um. Okay, so so and so and um, and this is sharp. So uh, Johnson in the Schaus and Schechtman. back in nineteen eighty seven, prove that this is sharp. So any endpoint metric space can be embedded with distortion D into some normed space of this dimension. So they constructed it. Uh, I, I, they, they constructed the, uh, a, 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 a norm space which is adapted to the metric space, and later Matushik showed that you can work with L infinity. So there's a long history here. I'm, uh, I'm going to say only a little bit of it. This is a, a big area there. This is the area of dimensionality reduction. I'm going to say a few things, but <coughs> including the one over D, the only thing is what is the constant. Okay. Um, this is sharp, and just so I want to say a little bit of history, but very quickly, the previous bound was due to linear London and Rabinovich. Back in 95. And that was that the dimension of x under that assumption has to be at least log n squared. OK? So, um, so and so an expand we knew that an expander requires this much dimension, but actually it requires exponentially more. Okay, so um, so uh, that's a very 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 quick background. Um, two comments. I, um, I, I want to say a little bit about the background, and then I want to show the proof. So the proof, which is already published um, a year ago, uses probability. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is a proof. Um, so to, I'm going to prove this. But it's a paper that's going to be online in a couple of weeks from this summer, where there is going to be a different proof, which is deterministic. And it's, I think, well, it's significantly simpler. I needed it for some concrete application, which I will say that. So there was a reason to change the proof. So I, I, I will show you that proof. But I do want to say a little bit about um, consequences and history. Um, um, just one very uh, quick comment. Notice that. Oh, so um, we're caring here about all pairwise distances, but what we really care about is that if you have a, if you have endpoints in a normed space, okay, and these endpoints behave up to a factor d in term as though they were an expander, in terms of only two averages, one of them is the average distance and edges, and the other one is the average total average distance between all pairs of points, because that's the only thing that we used. It, we didn't need the pointwise inequality. So these finitely many points a priori in a huge dimensional space, if these two averages are what they should be, it forces the ambient dimension to be huge. Okay? So there is something about spectral gap that has forces the continuous object that contains it to be very high dimensional. That's like the moral of this. And all you and, and it's enough to do this on average. So I, I want a little um, it, I will need to discuss this later. So a tiny bit of terminology. Um, The proof? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, where was I? So this, I mean, whenever I say this, I'm going to say, whenever this happens, I'm going to say that the, it embeds with distortion D. And if we just have the upper bound, for every ij. But the lower bound is an average. <coughs> is 
is at least 1 over d sum dg ij. Whenever, then I'll, I'll say that it embeds, this is standard terminology, with average distortion d. Do it with squares. I mean, the, the standard terminology is with, is with power one. I mean, you need less, right? Uh, so um, that this is really a nuance. But uh, right, I mean, if the, if the average over squares is bigger than than the um, you know, sorry, if the average, I, we ruled out this type of embedding into low dimension because the, the, the average over squares is only bigger than the, the L two norm is always bigger than the L one norm. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, let's do it with power one, okay? Let's say in the the, well, the, the proof all we all we used is that the, the sum of the squares, the average over the squares in the image, was at least log n squared. So, so um, this would work here because the, the average over the L two norm is bigger than the L one norm, which is bigger than log n. Okay, so actually everything is fine, but this is really not. If you want, put squares everywhere. Okay. Um, Where were we? Okay, so um, so this whole thing, I just want to say a little bit of background. Um, so the area is dimension reduction, and oh, I should say that um, the reason I got reinterested in this uh, in this question, which uh, I I knew since the Lindian Lohn Rabinovich paper, but I haven't been working on it since then. There was a paper of Andoni. Rosenstein, Nikolov, and Weingarten, which conjectured that you can actually embed every, exp there, are, there exist expanders which embed into some, with constant distortion to some Nord space of dimension log into a constant. Okay, and, and they conjectured this because if true, that would have implied some algorithmic lower bound. Okay, um, and so that, and it was consistent with what was known. So this shows that their conjecture is false. Um, but stay tuned because wh what does it mean that if you prove that, a con that if a conjecture is intended to prove an impossibility result, and you an and you prove that it's false, then you say then maybe that's good news, and it is good news. So this algorithmic problem using this inequality, there's going to be a paper in a month online which actually solves the algorithmic problem. So it actually the, the showing that the, the, the uh, um, that the um, strategy for pr proving that something is impossible is impossible turned out to to be good. Okay, okay. <laughs> but then, anyway, let, can we get? I want to get to the math here. But you will tell us what is the algorithmic. I'll tell you. I, I, if, I, if I don't have time, I want to show the math. Okay. It is, I can also, if you prefer that I talk about the algorithmic thing, then I won't show the proof. <laughs> but I, but it's, I cannot do both. Um, No, no, nearest, nearest ever. Okay, I'll tell you later, okay? Like, really, come on. I, I mean, we have to make choices in a talk, okay? Um, um, so, uh, okay, where were we? So, so, so there, is, there was a famous paper of Johnson and Inishaus. Um, back in 82 or 83, um, and the, in which they, they asked, that was a question, um, and they co conjectured that every endpoint metric space embeds with distortion big O of 1 into some norm space. of dimension log n, okay, that was, there was a reason for this conjecture, I will not get to it, but it was a, a prominent conjecture at the time, and in 1985, Bourguin showed that it's false, showed that, uh, no, uh, sometimes you need a dimension
dimension, like log n, it was a log log squared. Okay, so he gave a, 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 and it showed that there exist metric spaces such that if you embed them into any a norm space with constant distortion, then the dimension must be not log, but work log squared. And this theorem of Lindon and Rabinovich was 10 years later, they removed the log log. Okay, so that was the history. And many people, and there was uh, along the way, in, including, well, Burgen asked what is the correct dependence, and Lindon and Rabinovich were interested that you can define the, the metric dimension of a metric space to be, choose your favorite distortion, let's say 10, and look at the smallest nor dimension of a norm space into which it embeds with dimension 10, and they have a whole study of this, of this thing. And um, so this was a, the story uh, until in a, a great result of Matushek. What? Okay, what? You said it in a voice that I, was, I didn't know it was. I was, <laughs> I was, I was looking at. <laughs> Taking you more seriously if you use your voice. I mean, but, but, um, um, so, so in 1996, Matushek proved that um, that um, there exists. So for every n, for every d, there exists a endpoint metric space. Uh, such that if x embeds with distortion d, sorry, x, let's call it m, uh, such that if m embeds with distortion d into x, then the dimension of x is at least n to the c over d. Okay, so the fact that there exists such bad guys, um, which is much, much better than, <coughs> much, much worse than what Johnson Lindeshaus expected, and many people along the way conjectured um, that you can do a power of log, um, this is actually exponentially worse. There are really high spaces which require extremely high dimension into absolutely any norm. Um, so, um, so until when do I have? Hmm? Until a half. Okay, so 20 more minutes. Okay, so this is a talk about, a, this is a conference about elegance um, and probability, but so what I'll true but what, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll skip, there's a lot of applications which I'm going to skip. What I'm going to show is, I'm going to sketch what Matushek did. This is a wonderful theorem. I, I was the first year grad student when it came out, and this was the talk of the town in my little town. Um, and, the re and the reason was because this was a prominent question that Burgen and Linnitschaus and many people thought about, and the solution was not even close to what they would have tried. So I want to show you that. And actually, this is a beautiful thing to teach. I, I teach it in, in courses as an application of some sort of, a, of, of this beautiful application of algebra and combinatorics. So I'll do that, and then I'll show you a proof of the inequality, which gives the theorem for expanders, which is not the proof which is online. It's a proof that's gonna, which will have other applications, and it will be online soon. Okay. But I want to explain what Matushik did, and you'll see why, um, why. Over time, it, it, well, just because it was so different, I mean, he knew about what Lenin and Rabinovich did, and um, he changed it. So that's why maybe this wasn't expected that we have the same result for expanders, but it is. So here's what Matushik did. So choose your, you have your distortion, D, that you're shooting for, okay? So now I'm going to, a sketch of Matushik's argument. Um, so, okay, we're, we're given the distortion that we're shooting for, let's say 100, and what he does, he, he looks at, uh, let, uh, consider, uh, consider uh, a bipartite graph uh, each side is n vertices, or two n vertices, and girth girth 
bigger, anything strictly bigger than this 2D is what the proof needs. And roughly as many edges as we can hope for. And so I gave, give a name to the graph, G. So it's two sides, A, B, and their edges. So this is size N, this is size, okay? Um, and the number of edges is at least N to the one plus C over D, which is the most, uh, what is the constant is a big open question, but getting some constant you can do with a random construction. Okay, so the picture is, So this is A, let's call the vertices A1 up to AN. This is B, B1 up to BN. And there are edges, this is, this is no short cycles, bigger than twice the distortion you're shooting for. And many, many, let's call this number M if you want. And, um, and many, as, many, as many edges as you can hope for. And what, hmm? No, doesn't matter. So now, um, so what he does, he duplicates A. So he just make, adds a copy, AN, but let's call them primes, A1 prime up to AN prime. And what he does, for every edge, he flips a coin, let's say a plus minus one coin, okay? So if, so if you have AIBJ is an edge, <laughs> flip a coin for every such edge independently. If it comes out plus one, comes out heads, in a, a draw, so here's AI, this is BJ, draw the edge. Okay, if it comes out tails, delete the, uh, don't draw this edge, but look at, a, at, the, at the clone here, AI prime, and draw this edge. So this gives you two to the E different graphs. Graphs with three N vertices each. Everybody agree? You understand? So you just do a clone and you do this uh, thing. So this is two to the n, um, two to, to the m, two to the n to the one plus c over d many graphs, and the argument will be that one of these guys cannot embed into any low-dimensional space. Now what? I'm looking at all of the two lifts. I'm going it, it's, it's going to be an existential statement. In, okay, we're going to use a little bit of little bit of real algebraic geometry. So I, it's not really a probabilistic proof, but Describing it as, as, um, um, as flipping coins. Okay, so back to Matushek's because I want to get to the new argument. Um, so, okay, so take an instance of this. Okay, so let's call let's call the the, the coin the flips epsilon ij. So there, there are plus minus one, and there is a plus minus one associated to every edge. So. Um, so suppose, so and now look at the shortest path metric on this, on this new graph. So this is two to the m, to the number of edges, many shortest path metrics. And um, fine, so uh, let's, um, let, let's suppose that they were embedded in some norm space x. That this was embedded in the norm space x with distortion d, I deleted it. So it's a Lipschitz function, the, the distance in the image is at most the distance, the shortest path metric in the graph, and at least one over d times that. Mm? Fix an instance of this, and let's think what happens if, if it embeds into some norm space X. Okay, I'm, I'm just like, okay? And just so I don't uh, uh, have too many notations, instead of the function F, let's call the image of the vectors also A1 up to A and A1 prime. So think of these as vectors in my norm space X. It's actually F of AI, F of AI prime. Just a little bit less notation, okay? So by Han Banach, there exists, a, uh, there exists a norm one functional. <coughs> so for every edge, for every a i b j, which is an edge, in the initial graph, there is a norm one functional. Sorry, for every i, for, for every i, there is a norm one functional such that uh, x i star, such that xi star is norm 1, and xi star normalizes ai minus ai prime. So, okay? 
And now consider the matrix. The matrix Xi star applied to Bj minus some correction term Xi star applied to the average of Ai plus Ai prime over 2. Okay? Let's call this A. So what can we say about the rank of this matrix? So this is a functional, this is just a dot product. This is a gram matrix in an n-dimensional, uh, dim x, whatever the dimension of x is. So let's call the dimension of xk. So the first term, this xi star applied to bj, just xi star dot product bj is a gram matrix. So what's its rank? Is it most k? This is a rank one matrix. So the whole thing is rank at most the dimension of x plus one. K, I just denied it. Okay, dimension of x, k plus 1, which is a dimension of x plus 1. Okay, everybody agrees? So, what, so, and then you make the following little lemma that if a AI BJ was an edge in the original graph, then the sign of AIJ is exactly epsilon ij, whatever the coin flip was. Okay, so I'm, this is a little exercise, but I'll tell you where it's coming from. Um, the function is Lipschitz, so when there is an edge, the distances are at most one. But within the graph, what can you tell me about the distance between ai prime and ai? It's strictly bigger than twice the distortion. This is exactly the girth condition. Because if there were a shorter, a shorter than twice a distortion path from AI prime to AI, then just you can collapse it back to a, a too short cycle between AI to itself in the original graph. Okay, so what's happening here is that these guys are very far, very far apart. While you have control about the distances, uh, the distances uh, between uh, if there was an edge, uh, depending on the coin flip. And when you do a little computation by this choice, you just get that, that it has the correct sign. It's a little plane with inequalities. It's two lines. Okay? You don't want to show anything about xi star or bj, and how are you controlling it? It's a, you write this xi star of, you write this as xi, this thing is xi star of bj minus ai plus ai minus aj. It normalizes this term. And the other one used the fact that it's a norm one functional, but the distance between bj and ai, if epsilon i was 1, is 1, is at most 1. So you just do the computation and you just get it. You lose a factor d from the distortion, but the distance in the graph was bigger than d, and the difference between the two things is the, s the correct sign that it should be. Okay? So this is just a little computation. I'm not hiding uh, anything. The main point is to write down the matrix. Okay? Um, <coughs> Okay, but okay. So, what does it mean that a matrix has small rank? It means that A can be written as B times C transpose when B and C are n by well k plus one, whatever the rank is. That's what it means that the matrix. All these matrices for every choice of signs can be written in this way. A is actually depending on the choice of signs, of course. Okay, now think of the B's and the C's, the entries, which are 2n k plus 1 entries. Think of these as variables. And look at the locations in A epsilon only as a function, only where ij is an edge. And what you get is a system of this many polynomial e quadratic equations in this many variables. Sorry, m quadratic equations, for e one for each edge. m was the number of edges. Quadratic equation, this is a quadratic uh, uh, expression in the entries of B and C. You have a system of m quadratic equations in the variables, that, uh, in, in th not this many variables, that attain all possible choices of sign. And then there is a classical work of Milner and Thumb, Milner and Thumb, which bounds the sum of the Betty numbers of zero sets of polynomials, but if you just care about sign changes, 
You just plug this into that and crunch the numbers, and you get the theorem. OK? So this is an existential statement. Um, I think it's really amazing, really beautiful. Um, I don't understand the question. You, you showed that if you have one function from the... No, one thing has an embedding, it gets an equation. Okay. There's no more, there's no more non space. It's an equation. I see. There's no... I, I, so I didn't understand the question, but there was an answer. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> question? What's the yeah. dimensional metric space? Mm -hmm. What's the double dimensional this metric space? This is, this is many metric spaces. This, no, this particular one constructs. There are many, two to the m of them. I don't are, they all, are they all different dimensions? I have no idea. I have no idea. Okay, I mean, I have no idea. There, are, and one of them, one of, I mean, you can study what them uh, if, if you want. This is, but just this is. I'm not sure they're interesting for their own right, but. Um, I don't know. I simply don't know. I, 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 so I never thought about these metrics as beyond what I showed you. Okay. Um, what do you want to say? Um, okay, so. Uh, so small things, I mean, I, I was, I want to show the proof, but they, so I mean, just a small thing, I mean, for the proof that I showed, the inequality for the matrices was, was also worked when you don't care about these pointwise things to getting the signs exactly, but only that it works on average. So these are, so it has advantages over these uh, algebraic arguments, because here we really cared about sign patterns, not that the distances are okay on average. Um, and the average thing is actually important for certain applications, which I will not get to, but trust me, they are. Okay, so let me show you the proof of the other inequality. So, okay, so what's behind this is the notion or, of an unlinear spectral gap. And um, so this, the definition I'm going to write goes back to Gromov. This is something that I've been interested in and still am very interested for many years. Um, so the, spect the usual spectral gap of a matrix is nothing more is just it's uh, so w one over one minus lambda two is the smallest gamma such that <coughs> if you average xi minus xj for every Okay, so this is an, an exercise in linear algebra, expand the squares, compute, okay? So, but of course, uh, because you can do it in each coordinate separately. Of course, Nothing changed, yeah. okay? And you can do it also for vectors in a Hilbert space equally well. Just do it for each coordinate separately. Okay, and this is the sum of squares of distances. But now this there is kind of an obvious definition. So if if M D is a metric space, so you can define the nonlinear spectral gap of A with respect to the dis the distance squared in our case to be the same thing. It's kind of obvious when you do this exercise that this is a natural thing to look at. And this turns out to be extremely rich. Um, things can have certain spectral gaps with, with, with respect to certain nice metric spaces and completely different answers with respect to others. And 
there are situations where we know that random graphs are expanders, but in very nice situations, we can prove that probability tending to one random graphs are not expanders with respect to other, to, to other metric spaces. So there is a whole, um, a whole, this, make it, by passing through this world, it just, there is a lot to study. Okay, there is, a, and the theory, so, but, but one obvious thing is that whatever this gamma is, it's a bilipitz invariant, right? So in our situation, so from now on, d sub x is, is a, the smallest distortion uh, such that x embeds into L2 with that distortion. Okay, so this is a parameter that I associate to every norm space. So what can we say about gamma of the matrix relative to the given norm squared? So there's an absolutely trivial inequality, which is embedded into a Hilbert space. Usually this is a Bilipitz invariant. You lose your factor, distortion, whatever it is. And right here, one over one, one, over one minus lambda two. So this is trivial. Uh, because everything is squared, the distortion rate is squared. Right? Does everybody agree this is a trivial? This is just taking, forcing a, a, the situation. So we're just embedding into a Hilbert space and using spectral theory, the spectral interpretation. So the theorem um, is that actually gamma of A x is less than um, log of 2 dx root of 1 minus lambda 2 squared over 1 minus lambda 2 squared. OK? So this is incomparable, right? I mean, with the singularity when lambda 2 tends to 1 is better here, but the dependence on the distance the, the, how non-Euclidean you are is better here, um, but for, for when this is a constant, this is much better, and you just have to unravel the definitions and go, and you will see that this is in, this implies the matrix inequality. You just have to just this is just notation. Remember what the notation means, and just interpret reinterpret it, and you see that this is the matrix inequality. Okay, so the game here is a improving the nonlinear spectral gap to log of the distance. Hmm? Log of the distortion. Yeah. OK? So I don't know how the proof I'm going to show now, which is deterministic, it has other advantages. But I don't know how to get um, it with this term inside the log. But it's still good enough, because lambda 2 is a constant. Um, so I will, uh, I will do this proof. Now, if you want to see uh, the better thing and what it's good for, it's online. Okay. Um, but still good enough. Um, OK. So uh, should that squared thing be the square of dx? The logarithm is being squared. No, no, on, the, on the other side, gamma a of, gamma the norm, whatever the norm is, this is the metric. You're looking at the spectral gap relative to this abstract norm. Okay. Okay. So I have I cannot see one minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so um, so what, what do we want to say? I'm given so from now on when I write the norm L to n of x, I think of the, uh, the norm is just I have an n tuple of points x one up to x n in x to the n. And the norm is just okay. Um, and also for proving all these inequalities, I can always assume that sum of x i is zero, right? So let m be a parameter. Now fix m. We'll choose it in a second. And um, let's uh, also just one other thing. I, I, whenever I have a matrix, I can think of it as a matrix acting on L2 to the n. L, I, if, I have, I can, if I have a vector of vectors, I'll just 
I will just do this. Okay? I don't want to write tensor with the identity, but okay. Um, okay? So, um, so let's look now at the identity minus i plus a over 2 to the m apply to x. in L2 and of my space. So this is, of course, at least the norm of x minus uh, the norm of i plus a over 2 to the mx. That's the triangle inequality. And I can write this as um, 1 minus uh, this norm all these norms are in l2 and to the x everybody agrees i just but here or let me cheat cuz i'm running out of time not cheat mathematically cheat typograph typographically I can put here d of x, but write L2 of L2. Right. d of x was the distortion into L2, so I can just do it. But this is at most the norm of this operator on L2. Now, which is it's a symmetric matrix. What is its biggest eigenvalue in absolute value? It's 1 plus lambda 2 over 2. That's why I did i plus. I, wanted, I didn't want the negative eigenvalues. So this is at least 1 minus dx, 1 plus lambda 2 over 2 to the m, the norm of x. Okay? And, more, and moreover, I can bound the norm of x from below by, let's say, a half the sum of xi <laughs> minus xj squared. Over all ij, a half. It's just a triangle inequality in this level 2 of x. It, right, you just do a triangle inequality. Is that okay? If you think it's strange, it's trivial, and I'm not lying. <laughs> okay? So, what do you know? So, you know, so. Choose. You use the fact that the sum of the xi is zero. Oh, yeah, I should have said the whole point here. Uh, yeah, yes, sorry, sorry. The, I, x, the sum of xi is zero means that the first, uh, that, I'm, that I'm looking at the second eigen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, I said, oh, that was that's why, okay, that's, that's, where you, that's where I use the lambda 2 here. Yes, absolutely. So, so, yeah, very important point. Okay? Hmm? Here it's just a triangle inequality. The fact that you bound this from above is a triangle inequality. The fact that it's equivalent is because the sum is zero. Up to f I'm bounding a difference of two vectors. Anyways, okay. So choose m so that this quantity here, what I lost, is small. So such that um, dx one plus lambda two over two m is less than a half. Right? And then we get that. 1 over n squared, sum xi minus xj squared. I'll, I'll square everything. This is some constant. Um, is less than i minus i plus a over 2 to the n x. But what's written here, squared, what's written here is 1 over n, sum over i, sum over j, i plus a over 2 to the m ij xi minus xj. I'm using here that it's stochastic. That's the, I, the, sum, the, the, the sum over j is just xi. And now use convexity that it's a norm. That's at most 1 over n sum over ij i plus a 
over 2 to the n, xi minus xj squared. OK? So this is almost the inequality, that, even better than the inequality that we wanted, because we've got a constant here, except that you don't have the, ma the matrix that I was interested in. I have its nth power. But those, OK, now I'm going to, because I'm ending, those who know the notion of Markov type, this is exactly what it's for. What you have here is the, ever, you, the distance, the expected distance, after m steps of the, of the Markov chain with this transition matrix, if you start from the stationary distribution, when in this case is uniform, how far you are after m steps. And here I'm using the trivial fact that after, if after m steps, you're at most m times uh, where you started. In this case, with squares, that's at most m squared. But of course, I can delete the i, because when i is j, when i equals j is 0, a over, a over 2. And if you remember what the m is, you got the inequality. OK? And um, for, so this is, for, uh, so there's, those of you who know, there's like a huge uh, range of possibilities. So you can, uh, you can do better in spaces where you have better estimates on the way that Markov chains, uh, uh, how fast they diverge from, from their starting point. And look at the paper, you'll see all kinds of applications. But you can do, but actually, this inequality was just like the min, this proof was the minimum proof to get to the inequality for this whatever and, uh, that, um, that I showed you in the beginning. But there was a big loss here of this by dx. And you can do it more carefully using an interpolation argument so that in this step you just lose a factor 2. And that forces a much smaller m. And that leads to actually things which are needed for applications. So um, if you look at what's online, this is somehow the, the it's very, it's, it's, it gives the inequality, but it's, it's also losing a, a more than it, should, than it should do for other applications. But for the inequality that I said, this is the basic proof. And that's it. <laughs>